says the Peleoetz, Alav Shalom. We're up to the entry of Ava Ish Veisha, the love between a husband and a wife. He says the love between a husband and a wife is something absolutely essential, and they have to have Shia Benim Ava Aza. They have to have a real strong bond between them. So therefore, Ava Aza. So therefore, a person has to know that he have to love his wife very much, and they have to have a very good bond. And not has v'shalom, what sometimes people fall into if they don't invest in their marriage, has v'shalom, they fall into roommates. You know, the, the marriage that's like a roommate, he comes home, he says, Sveta, where's the dinner? He sits down and eats his dinner, he says, here, this is for the electricity, this is for the tuition, this is for the ticket. So, I went to... To television smotras. I'm gonna go watch TV, then he goes to sleep. He goes to his room, she goes to her room. She does her thing, he does his thing. And they're not really married, they're just roommates. He cooks, she cooks, he pays the bills, and that's their bond. It's not a real bond of love, it's a bond of business. You give me this, I give you that. And that's not really, uh, you know, companionship. So therefore he says, it start with this, the period starts with the man. He says a man has to love his wife very much. As the Gemara Sechir Yavamot Samechbet says, Hayav la'avak ke gufo lechabda yeter me gufo. He has to love her and respect her like his own self. If you wouldn't ex- expect someone uh, yourself to do Sir X Y Z thing, so why would you expect your wife to, to suffer and do it? You have to love her like you love yourself. You would expect yourself to clean the whole house in one day and be able to do it. So then you're okay. If you expect that from yourself, so then you can expect it from your wife because you love her like you love yourself. But he can't expect things that you would never imagine yourself to do. You have to love her like you love yourself. And he says, the Chabda, the Gemara says, to honor her more than yourself. What does it mean, honor her more than yourself? The Gemara says that people, people's clothing is called, their, the, the Tanaim used to call their clothing, my, 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 the, the ones that give me my honor, my clothes would give me my honor. Some people, they buy very expensive things, but for their wife, no, why well, you need to go to Bloomingdale's? Go to Marshall's, huh? Ah, what, 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 what do you need to go? What do you need to go there for? Choice time. Yeah, he drives a Mercedes Benz. She says, "No, my wife, Toyota. That's it. Simple car, minivan, simple car. You don't need a fancy car. But he himself needs a fancy car. Why? Why for him? He honors himself more than his wife. He says, the Gemara, you have to honor your wife more than you honor yourself." So therefore, that's why uh, the the very very big tzaddikim husbands, they go and make sure their their wives have whatever they need before they buy it for themselves. Wow. That way, they always make sure that they honor their wives more than they honor themselves. <laughs> However, at the same time, you even though you love your wife very much and you're very you know close to her and you listen to what she says and you care for her, same time it cannot you cannot let your wife the love for your wife overtake and block you and hinder you from your service of Hashem. Sometimes, as a person's wife, if he's very close to her and does everything she says, it can be Hashem that she'll tell you not to do mitzvot, not to go to shul, not to go to pray, not to go to learn, and this is blocking you from service of Hashem. So therefore, a person has to know that he cannot allow such a thing to happen. As the sages tell us in Masechet Avot, Al tarbeis hi ma'isha. Do not speak excessively with a woman. Which, why? Because whoever express, ex, uh, talks excessively with the woman, Gorem ra'ala asmo, he brings evil to himself. Botel mi divre Torah, neglects Torah study, Sofo yoresh genom, eventually inherits genom. Which means to say, obviously a person has to speak to his wife, obviously he has to bond with her every day, he obviously has to talk about her day, his day and her day, and you know, about, about normal things that a couple speak about, and, 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 and it's your best friend, your wife is your best friend, you have to speak with them. How can you have a relationship with someone you don't speak with? But the Mishnah says excessively. What does excessively mean? I mean, you spoke, you bonded, you felt that you were had each other's presence, and you felt each other, you bonded. So now what? Instead of going to learn, you just sit and schmooze with her longer. You sit and go do something else. You could have, she felt sipuk. She felt enough in her soul that you bonded with her today, but you chose to stay there and not learn. You chose to stay there and excessively speak to her. And when you excessively speak to her, that, that causes and leads to a person that a wife will eventually cause him to not go to learn in general, not go to pray. Oh, you came from work. You have to go to Minharavid. No, why? You have to help me with the kids. You have to stay here. No, don't go to Minharavid. Don't go to learn at night. Stay here. Why? Well, you can't leave me alone and eventually this becomes a habit and then you tell the guy why don't you come shield why don't you come pray uh, my wife my kids shalom bai this that why because he allowed it to happen he didn't tell her 
obviously he has to tell her nicely. He can't go and blow her out of the water. And so he can explain to her nicely, listen, I understand that I, you know, I have to spend time with you. I have to make proper time for you, but I also have to make proper time for Hashem. There's a time for Hashem and there's time for you also. You know, we have to have a schedule. It can't just be, I come home, you have me the rest of the night. You know, it has to be that I have time to go pray. I have time to, I have obligations. I have to learn in the morning, and the evening. And whoever does not do this, and he goes, just listen to his wife. Eventually, she goes and takes advantage of it, and he goes, falls, and gain no has shalom. So therefore, that's why he says, The person has to be clever, act with wisdom. He has to put, he has to push away with the left hand and bring closer with the right hand. Which means, yes, he shows tremendous love to his wife with the right hand, but at the same time, he always puts the left hand under some sort of rebuke. And he tells her, listen, I understand, but you have to understand. And listen, I have obligations. I, you know, I don't take it the wrong way, but really I care for you. I just, I also have to do my obligation. Yeah. So therefore you have to have right hand and left hand. A person has to make sure that he loves his wife, her neshama. The main love is the neshama, which means that spiritual love for the neshama, not just physical. Some people, they love, so, yes, some people, they love the physicality. And just physically loving, it's not necessarily physically love. It's considered, the, the real love a person has to have is for the neshama, the, the spiritual growth. What is the poor, purpose of a person getting married? Puru And completing your soul, finding the other half. The main thing is the soul. It's in her, let's say he's cheap, and she's very, uh, she's very uh, spendy. Right, spending a lot. What happens? So the, through the two of them, they learn how to have a balance. He's very quick to anger. She's very patient. So she teaches them how to have patience. So what if? What do you see? A person is supposed to get bonded from, to, to, to the other half, and they're supposed to help each other grow spiritually. That's the main love a person is supposed to have. So therefore, it's supposed to be grow, and not you don't. It can't be that your wife makes you go down spiritually. It has to be you. Grow.